right, guys, this is um, the last lesson of this chapter, last lesson of the school year. Um, our learning target is to put rational and irrational numbers in order from least to greatest. So here again, um, we're going to be working with numbers that are all different. Um, and we have to change everything into decimals so that we can tell what's the smallest, what's the biggest, just like we did in our previous lesson. Um, this first set of examples, everything's already a decimal, so we're going to use those examples to teach how to do the ordering part. But then um, this next, the part that comes after, um, change all values into decimals, adjust place values with repeaters and zeros. That's a really critical step you need enough place values to show each decimal is different. Okay, so everything here on this page is going to be decimals. And I'm just going to increase the size here, zoom in a little bit. Okay, and what I like to do is um, I like to group up my numbers. So the two ones that kind of go together, you don't have to do this, but this is what I like to do. Um, like anything that's three point something, I look at those first. Okay, and they're all three point something. Let's see what they are. 3.2, 3.6, 3.3 repeating. Okay, so 3.2 is the smallest one out of the three point somethings. And I put a little one on the top of it so that I know which one I think is the smallest. Then 3.3 repeating, that would be the next one. I'll put a two above it. 3.6, I'll put a three above it. Okay, then out of my four points that are left over, I've got a 4.5 and a 4.15. Now 15 may seem bigger than five, but remember if we equal out the place values, that's really 4.50. So 4.15 would be the fourth highest and fifth would be the very highest one, the 4.5, okay? So over on my lines, going least to greatest, I'm gonna start with my first one, 3.25. Number two is my 3.3 .3 repeating. Number three was 3.6. Number four was 4.15, and number five was 4.5. Okay, I'm going to come back to the negative one. Let's go to the twos and the ones and the sevens. Okay, this one is super tricky because everything it, you have 2.7s, 2.1s, and it, it's, it's tricky. What's going to be helpful here is if we give everything the same number of place values. So I see that 2.17, that's two place values. Let's give everything two place values. So 2.7, if I was going to give it another place value, it would be a zero. 2.1, I would give it a zero. Tricky, tricky, 2.7 repeating means that the invisible place value after would be another 7. 2.1 repeating means another 1. So all of these start with 2 point, so I really am not going to, that's not helpful to determine least to greatest. What I really need to do now is look at the double digits after. We've got 70, 17, 10, 77, and 11. Okay, so now I can tell that the very lowest one would be the 10, so that would be the first one. 2.1 repeating, super close, but that would be second. 2.17, 17 would be the next highest, then 70, then 7 repeating. Okay, so evening out the place values really helped me to see which one was largest and which one was smallest and what order they should go in. And then I can write them on the line. So first was the 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, 2.8, 2.9, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2
than was 2.1 repeating because that has more ones after it. Then 2.17, 2.7, and 2.7 repeating. Let's talk about the negative number line. So I'll go back up uh, an example. Remember that the negative number line runs backward. Well, one thing I noticed right away is this guy right here. That's not negative at all. Okay, so he's kind of the oddball here, and all the other numbers are negative. So I know that that one being positive has to be the largest, and I can just kind of go over to the end, let's see, 1.325, and I can write that one in right away. 1.325 because anything positive is larger than anything negative. Okay, now I'll go back to my numbers. And we've got, again, I like to group things. So we've got negative one point something, negative one point something, and negative one point something. And then this guy, there's another odd out one. And that's negative 2.3. So remember that anything that seems larger when it's negative is actually smaller. So that negative 2.3 is actually the smallest. And I can put that first. So now it's the middle group that I have to figure out. How do those negative 1 point somethings figure out? How do we figure out which one goes in what order? Well, I'm just going to remind you that we are going to look at the place values that are different. So 1.2, 1 1.4, and 1.8. Seems like they're in order already, but they're not. Remember that on the negative side of the number line, the number that feels the largest is actually the smallest. So this 8 right here feels the biggest, but it's actually the smallest, and that would go next. Then our negative 1.4. And then negative 1.25. Okay, let's practice that one more time with the negative number line. Because it is tricky and made that this last one is the trickiest. Okay, so everything's negative. Everything's negative three point something, so it comes down to the decimal digits. Okay, and I see everything is two digits except for this guy in the middle, but this is a repeater right here. So I think we're going to have to expand it, okay, because the negative 3.25 and negative 3.25 repeating is different, okay. So negative 3.25 by itself, there would be just a zero after that, okay? Negative 3.25 repeating means there's another 25 after that, okay? Now to keep decimals even, maybe I give that two decimal places as well. So now we're up to four place values, four place values. This needs three zeros. This needs two zeros. And the last one needs two zeros. The place holding, giving everything the same place values just helps you to see what is, uh, it helps give perspective to see what's the largest, okay? Especially when numbers are super close, like 3.25 and 3.25 repeating, all right? So uh, the largest number the in the negative number line is really the smallest number, so we've got if we look at it this way, we've got 25,000, or 2,500, 2,525, 2,000, 2,200, and 2,600. So out of those numbers, the 2,600 is the largest, but therefore is the smallest when it's negative. 
Next we've got 3.2500 or 3.2525. Well, the 2525 is bigger, but it's really smaller because it's negative. Really close. Okay, $2,000 or $2,200. Um, if you owe $2,200, that means you have less money. Okay, so there's our order. When I write these on the line, I'm not going to write all those extra zeros. I'm going to write them exactly how I see them. So neg in the typed version, negative 3.26 was the first one. Negative 3.25, repeating. Negative 3.25. Uh, let's see, negative 3.22. And negative 3.2. And kicking it up a notch, now we've got numbers that are all in different formats. And if they're all in different formats, it's really hard to know which one is the biggest and the smallest and in between and how to order them from least to greatest. So as we've been doing this whole time, we're going to convert them into decimal form. Okay, so I've got everything in decimal form. 245% is 2.45. 2 and 3 fifths is 2.6. Now, why did I put a zero after that? Because if I just figured it out by itself, it wouldn't have the zero. I put the zero because we're going to have um, two place values in each thing for comparison purposes. Square root of 8.8, 2.97, 2.3 repeating. Notice that I wrote the decimal version of it underneath with two threes so that we have two place values for comparison, comparison's sake. And it becomes really important with that 2.6 repeating that I draw both sixes so that when we compare um, this 2.60 and this 2.6 repeating, that's where having that extra zero, that extra six, really shows the difference in those two numbers. Okay, so now that I see those numbers as decimals, it's much easier to see which one is the smallest. Okay, the smallest would be this guy right here, 2.33, then 2.45, then 2.6, then 2.6 repeating, and finally 2.97, okay? So I've got my order of which from smallest to greatest. Now the important part is when I go to write these things on the number line, you must write what was typed on the page, not the decimals, okay? So I have to put, my first value is 2.3 repeating. I'm going to put 2.3 repeating. I'm not going to put the decimal that I wrote underneath 2.33, okay? Number two was 245%. That's what I put on my line is what was the number originally. I'm not gonna write 2.45. Three was two and three fifths. Same thing. Make sure you write what was typed. 2.6 repeating. And lastly, the largest one was root 8.8. .8. All right, in my next example, I've already done all the decimals. Square root of 3.2, 1.79, one and a half is 1.5. I am gonna put the zero after the five, and that's because right next to it, I've got 1.55. So it helps those to look totally different um, and see the difference and see which one's actually bigger. 11 divided by six is 1.83. It's technically 1.83 repeating. Um, and then cube root of five, 1.71. All right, so now that everything is in decimal form, it's easy to see that the smallest value is that one and a half. 
The next one would be that one that's super close to it, 1.55. 1.75. 1.75. That would be my third value. 1.79 would be my fourth value. And 1.83 would be the highest value. Okay, then I can go and put them on my number line, or on my the lines next to these values in order from least to greatest. So the smallest one we labeled was 1.5 as a decimal, but when we put it on the line, we have to put it as it was originally, one and a half. Two originally was 155%. Three, cube root of five. Four, square root, 3.2. And the fifth one, 11 over six. Last example, hardest example, because it's negatives. Okay, so I've changed all of these into decimals, and one of them kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. It's this guy right here. Um, because it's negative one point something and everything else is negative two point something. So negative one, one feels smaller than two, but remember in the world of negatives, it's actually larger. So that negative 175% is the largest one. And I can put that on the line without really thinking about it um, in connection with the other numbers. So I can just stick that right on there and focus all of my energy and my brain cells on the others. Okay, so that was five. That was the highest one. Okay, so the smallest number feels like the biggest number, but it's actually the smallest number would be this one because we've got 44 where everything else is 40, 24, 33. Okay, um, the next big but small is that 2.4. Negative 2.33 would be the next one and negative 2.24 would be the next one. So one was that negative 2.4 repeating. Remember we write it how it was typed. Then negative 2.4, then negative 7 thirds, and negative square root of five. And there you have it folks. Hope you've had a good year and I'll talk to you soon.